Hey guys, we are back. And the big news today, of course, is Eurogamer posting the clock speeds and some more specs of the Nintendo Switch from their own sources, kind of pretty much collaborating that the Nintendo Switch will be based on a Maxwell architecture Tegra X1 processor. Now, I'm not going to say that this is 100% true, this information that I'm going to share, but Eurogamer was pretty much 100% correct on the Nintendo Switch information they posted before. So for now, I would say that this information is probably extremely likely to be true. Now, I did a video a few days ago about the potential that the Switch could have this USB-C port, having an external GPU attached or something like that. That was just speculation, but I also talked about the Maxwell architecture being similar to Pascal and a lot of you guys said that I was totally off base and wrong about that but according to Eurogamer I was correct because I was talking about the Tegra X1 processor I wasn't talking about different variations of Maxwell the Tegra X1 had the last variation of the Maxwell architecture and it shares a lot of similarities with Pascal which is what Eurogamer said in their article and I'll read a little bit of it from Eurogamer they said now to be fair for Nvidia Tegra X1's Maxwell was the final iteration of the architecture and does have technological aspects that are found in Pascal specifically double rate FP16 support we're also told that Switch has bespoke customizations that may involve pulling other Pascal optimizations and it's also worth noting that at the nuts and bolts level Pascal and Maxwell are already very similar so with that in mind, the main difference comes down to the process technology 20 nanometers in Maxwell versus 16 nanometers FinFET in Pascal. So for all you guys saying that I was incorrect in what I was saying about Maxwell being similar to Pascal, that's what I was talking about. I was talking about the X1 chip. I wasn't talking about other iterations of Maxwell. The older iterations of Maxwell were different from Pascal, but the last one was very, very similar. And Eurogamer backs me up on that. Also, right before the reveal of the Switch, the specs were leaked on Twitter, and Eurogamer confirms that those specs were actually very, very correct in what they were told. They said in the article here that, Behind the scenes, sources inform us that Nintendo continued to brief developers with a spec sheet that is uncannily similar to this Twitter leak, and they link it there in the article, that actually surfaced before the official reveal. And in crucial areas, it's a match for a stock Tegra X1. So that would mean 256 CUDA cores, that would mean a quad-core A57 ARM processor, plus four ARM Cortex A53 processors that aren't listed in the X1 benchmarks, but basically don't have much utilization according to them. The main part that has people going crazy today is the clock speeds of this chip in the Switch are actually clocked lower than a stock Tegra X1. So stock Tegra X1 specs go something like this, which I'll also link in the description. CUDA cores 256, texture unit 16, ROP 16, GPU clock speed 1 gigahertz, memory bus bandwidth is 64 bit, memory clock speed 1600 megahertz, LP DDR4. Now for the switch clock speeds that Eurogamer has obtained, they say that when it's docked, the switch has a maximum of 768 megahertz for the GPU as opposed to the stock Tegra X1 which has a thousand megahertz or one gigahertz and the CPU speeds available they list it as being one gigahertz docked and also one gigahertz undocked now the key point is when the switch is undocked it underclocks itself all the way down to 307 megahertz which is about 70 percent lower than the Tegra X1's max clock speed of one gigahertz so it's 307.2 megahertz when it's undocked in portable mode no doubt to say battery life, right? And also it's going to be in 720p, most likely lower resolution. Now, the official stock numbers for Tegra X1 for FP32 is 512 gigaflops. Now, if you compare that to Xbox One and PlayStation 4, Xbox One is 1.3 teraflops, PlayStation 4 is 1.8 teraflops. So 512 gigaflops for the stock Tegra X1 is about 2.5 times less powerful than Xbox One if you look at it that way. Now for the switch, if it's underclocked that low, estimation is when it's docked, it'll be about 400 gigaflops or so from what I've been reading. That's the rough estimate. And then when it's undocked, it'll be even lower than that, maybe 200 gigaflops. So basically like Wii U, Wii U Plus level in terms of performance. Now if you're wondering what Tegra X1 can do graphically, 
it can do pretty decent. You know, uh, Digital Foundry did a comparison of what it could do on the NVIDIA Shield TV, and it was running a comparison video of Resident Evil 5 Metal Gear Solid Revengeance uh, versus the Xbox 360 versions. Now, they actually did not run as well as Xbox 360 on the NVIDIA Shield TV, but they didn't run them too badly, basically, and I'll leave those links in the description as well. Then you got people arguing that the NVIDIA Shield TV was not to the metal, you know, not enough performance was being able to take out of it because running on Android, things like that people were saying. And it was confirmed today that the Switch will be compatible with Vulkan, OpenGL 4.5 and OpenGL ES. So that is good news that the Switch will be compatible with these APIs to make developing to the metal of the system easier and be able to get more performance out of it. So who knows how much they can squeeze out of it basically, but as far as raw power is concerned, it's not going to be running as high as a Tegra X1. So not only is it not going to be Pascal based according to Eurogamer's information, but it's not going to even be as powerful as a Tegra X1. Now is that a huge deal? I've said this before, but it is only a huge deal if developers will not support the Switch with games. That is the only instance in where these specs being low become a huge problem for the consumers because that would mean that we don't get the games and it will basically mean that this is another Wii U. And that is what people are saying online is that this is another Wii U because the specs and the performance are not that much better than Wii U. Now, Wii U Plus, maybe 2x Wii U, you know, at the most. Now, we've been hearing positive things from developers about this system, right? So, if developers bring games to the Switch, then it's still going to be successful because you'll be getting all the same games as the other systems. The system can run all the same APIs as the other systems. But, of course, the graphics will be downscaled quite a bit. It again only comes down to if developers are willing to put their games on this system. If they are not willing to put the games on this system, then Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> then it's going to be very difficult to have this system be successful with just Nintendo supporting it. They can support it with all their development efforts going on this one system, but without third party support, it may become similar to a Wii U situation in about a year's time or so because if developers don't put games on the system. Nintendo can't support it all by themselves consistently without having the quality of their games degrade a bit. We can say, hey, you know, maybe they'll have a game per month or something like that, but without third-party support, it's a very dangerous situation for the system. So with third parties being positive on the system so far from what we're hearing, I'm optimistic that we can at least see something more from third parties when the system is revealed in January 12th. So it's not the end of the world that the system has low specs. But it is unfortunate that the system seems to have specs that are a little bit lower than what people were expecting. And granted, this isn't confirmed by Nintendo, but look guys, Nintendo is not going to confirm this. They never even confirmed the Wii U specs, and it's the system is dead. So don't expect Nintendo to confirm these specs. So far, these are the best specs we have to go on from Eurogamer, and they've been right on what they posted before. And so this is as legitimate as we can get until someone actually tears down the system and finds out that this is true or false but this is what they're hearing so far it's a rumor for now we'll see what Nintendo reveals on the switch on January 12th but for now this is what we have to go by and we have multiple sources now confirming that this is about what the Nintendo switch is based on a Tegra X1 Maxwell processor that is actually clocked lower than the stock Tegra X1 so take that for what it is guys but for me personally if we all stayed in the 16-bit area with Super Nintendo graphics, I would be extremely happy because we'd all be getting great games from Nintendo, and Nintendo made some of the best games ever on Super Nintendo. So graphics are really not the issue, it's about getting games. And I've always said this actually the past year or so, it's about getting the games. That's why I was always hoping for Nintendo to have a more powerful system, more competitive with the other systems because those systems get all the games, and we all want games too. So if developers can't put their games for some reason on the Switch, then it will be a problem for Nintendo. And that's the same problem they had with the Wii U. That's the point I'm getting at. We all want to have the games to play on our system. So give us the games, and I think we'll all be happy with it, regardless of the specs. Alright guys, let me know what you think in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and comment. And I'll talk to you very soon in the next video. Take care.